from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Spark Summit 2017. Brought to you by Databricks. You are watching theCUBE at Spark Summit 2017. We continue our coverage here, uh, talking with uh, developers, partners, customers, all things Spark. And today we're honored now to have our next guest, Dr. Jishan Wang, who's the Senior Director of Data Science at the CTO office at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Dr. Wong, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me here. All right, and also to my right we have Mr. Jim Kabilis, who's the lead analyst for data science at Wikibon. Welcome, Jim. Hey, great to be here, like hey, always. Well, well, let's jump into it. At first I want to ask about your background a little bit. We were talking about the, uh, the organization. Maybe yes. you could do a better job of telling me where you came from and you just recently joined HPE. Yes. Uh, I actually recently joined the HPE early this year through the Nero acquisition. And uh, now I'm the senior director of data science in the CTO office of Aruba. Actually, Aruba, uh, you probably know like uh, two years back, HPE acquired Aruba as a wireless networking company. And then now Aruba takes charge of the whole enterprise networking business in HPE, which is about uh, over three billion annual revenue every year now. Mm -hmm. That's not confusing at all. I, I could follow you. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> well, all I know is you're doing some exciting stuff with Spark, so maybe tell us about this new solution that you're developing. Yes, um, actually my uh, most experience of Spark now uh, goes back to the Nero time. So Nero was a three and a half year old startup that invented, uh, uh, reinvented the enterprise uh, security using big data and data science. So what is the problem we solved in Nero, we try to solve in Nero is called the UEBA, user and entity behavior analytics. So I just try to be very brief here. You know, most of the traditional security solutions focus on you know, detecting attackers from outside. But uh, what if the origin of the attacker is inside the enterprise, say Snowden? Mm -hmm. What can you do, right? So you probably heard many cases today, employee leaving the company by stealing lots of the company IP and sensitive data. So UEBA is a new solution. Try to monitor the behavior change of the enterprise users to detect both this kind of malicious insider and also the compromised user. Behavioral analytics. Yes, mm -hmm. so it sounds like uh, it's a native uh, analytics driven like a product. Yeah, and Jim, you've done a lot of work in the industry on this, so any questions you might have for him around Yuba? Yeah, give us a sense for how you're incorporating uh, streaming analytics and machine learning into that uh, UEBA solution and then where Spark fit, fits into the overall approach that you take. Right, okay. So actually when we started uh, three and a half years back, the first version, when we developed the first version of the data pipeline, we used a mix of Hadoop, you know, Yarn, Spark, uh, even uh, uh, Apache Storm for different kind of stream and uh, mm -hmm. batch analytics work. But uh, soon after with the uh, increased maturity and also the momentum from this uh, open source Apache Spark community, we migrated all our stream and the batch you know, the ETL and uh, data analytics work into Spark. And it's not just the Spark, it's a Spark, Spark streaming, MLLib, the whole ecosystem mm -hmm. of that. So there are uh, at least uh, like a couple advantages uh, we have experienced through this kind of uh, transition. The first thing which really helped us is the simplification of the infrastructure and also the reduction of the DevOps efforts there. So simplification around Spark, the whole stack of Spark that you use. Yes. Okay. So you know, for the Nero solution, originally we support uh, even here today we support uh, both the on-premise and the cloud deployment. Mm -hmm. For the cloud, we also support uh, the public cloud like AWS, uh, Microsoft Azure, and also private cloud. Mm -hmm. So you can understand uh, with uh, you know if we have to maintain a stack of different like open source uh, tools over this kind of many different deployments. The overhead of doing the DevOps work to monitor, you know, alarming, debugging this kind of infrastructure over different deployments is very hard. Mm -hmm. So Spark provides us some unified platform. We can integrate the streaming, you know, batch, real-time, near real-time, or even long-term batch job all together. So that heavily reduced the, both the expertise 
and also the effort required for the DevOps. Mm -hmm. You know, this is one of the biggest advantages we experienced, and certainly we also experienced something like the scalability, you know, performance, and also the convenience for developers to you know, develop new applications, all of this from Spark. So are you using the Spark structured streaming mm -hmm. runtime inside of your application, is that true? Uh, we actually use Spark in the stream processing when the data, so like in the UEBS solution, the first thing is collecting a lot of the data. Mm -hmm. Different kind of data source, the network data, you know, cloud application data. So when the data comes in, the first thing is like a streaming job for the ETL to process the data. Then after that, we actually also developed some like a different uh, uh, frequency, like a one minute, a 10 minute, one hour, one day of this like uh, analytics job on top of that. And as even like recently, we have uh, uh, started some early adoption of the deep learning into this, you know, how to use deep learning to monitor the user behavior change over time, especially after user gives a notice, you know, what user, is user going to access like more servers or download mm -hmm. some of the sensitive data? So all of this requires very complex like analytics mm -hmm. infrastructure. Now there were some mm -hmm. announcements today here at Spark Summit by Databricks of adding deep learning support to their core Spark code base. What are your thoughts about the deep learning pipelines API that they mm -hmm. they, they announced this morning? It's a new it's new news. I'll understand if you don't haven't digested it totally, but you probably have some good thoughts on the topic. Yes. Uh, Actually, this is also a news for me. Yeah. So I can just speak from my current experience. How to integrate the deep learning into Spark actually was a big challenge so far for us. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, what we use so far, the deep learning piece, we use TensorFlow. And uh, certainly most of other stream and uh, data you know, massaging or ETL work is done by Spark. Mm -hmm. So in this case, there are a couple ways to uh, manage this too. One is to set up uh, like two separate uh, resource pool, one for Spark, the other one for TensorFlow. But mm -hmm. in our deployment, there's some like a very small on-premise deployment which has only like a four node, five node cluster. It's not efficient to split the resource in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So we're actually also looking for mm -hmm. some like a closer integration between deep learning and Spark. So one thing we looked at before is called the TensorFlow on Spark, which was open source a couple months ago by Yahoo. Right. So maybe this is certainly a more exciting news for the Spark team to develop this native integration. There. Very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, and we talked about the UEBA solution, but let's go back to a little broader HPE perspective. Uh, you have this concept called the Intelligent Edge. What's that yeah. all about? So that's a very cool name. Uh, actually, you know, come a little bit back, you know, I come from the enterprise uh, background, and the enterprise uh, applications have uh, some, like, uh, actually a lag behind than mm. consumer applications in terms of the adoption of the new data science technology. So there are some native challenges for that. For example, you know, collecting and storing large amount of this sensitive, enterprise sensitive data is a huge concern, you know, especially in European countries. Mm. You know, also for the similar reason, how to collect, uh, you know, normally when you develop enterprise applications, your lack of some good quantity and quality of the training data. So these are some native challenges when you develop enterprise uh, applications. But uh, even despite of this, HP and Aruba recently made uh, several acquisitions of the ana uh, analytics companies mm -hmm. to accelerate the adoption of analytics into different product lines. Actually, mm -hmm. that uh, intelligent age comes from this like uh, IoT, right? Which mm -hmm. is the uh, Internet of Things is expected to be the fastest growing market in the next uh, few years here. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. are you going to be integrating the UEBA behavioral analytics and Spark capability into your IoT portfolio at HP? Is that is that a strategy or a direction for you? Yes, yes. For the big picture, that certainly is. So. You can think, uh, I think uh, some of the Gartner report expect uh, the number of the IoT devices is going to grow over 20 billion by 2020. You know, since all of these IoT devices are connected to either internet or internet, uh, either through wire or wireless. So as a networking company, we have the advantage of collecting data and even take some actions at the first place. So the idea of this intelligent age 
is to, you know, we want to turn each of these IoT devices, the small IoT device like IP camera, like those motion detection, all of these small devices as both the distributed sensor for the data collection and also some inline like actor to do some real time or even close to real time like, act, like uh, decisions. For example, the behavior anomaly detection is a very good example here. If an IoT device is compromised, you know, it's an IP camera has been compromised and used to steal your internal data, we should detect and stop that at the first place. Can you comment about the, the challenges of putting deep learning algorithms natively on resource constrained endpoints in the IOT. That must be really challenging to get them to perform well, considering that there may be just a little bit of, of memory or flash capacity or whatever on the endpoints. Any thoughts about how that can be done effectively and efficiently? Very good question. And at low cost? Yes, very good <laughs> question. So there are two aspects into this. First is uh, this like a global training of the intelligence which is not going to be done on each of the device. In that case, each of the device is more like the sensor for the data collection. Mm -hmm. So we are going to build, uh, collect the data, send to the cloud, build all of this, uh, you know, uh, giant pool, like uh, computing resource to train the classifier, to train mm -hmm. the model. Mm -hmm. But when we train the model, we are going to ship the model. So the inference and the detection of the model mm -hmm of those like behavior abnormally really happen on the end point. Do the training centrally and then push the uh, trained algorithms down yes. to the edge devices. But gotcha. even like uh, the second as well, even like you said, uh, you know, some of the device like say people try to put those small chip in those, uh, in the spoon, <laughs> in the hair, uh, you know, in hospital mm -hmm. to make it uh, like more intelligent. You cannot uh, put uh, even just uh, the detection piece there. So we also look into some new technology I know like uh, Cafe recently re uh, announced, re released some of the lightweight deep learning models. Right. You know, also there's some, you probably know, there's some of the uh, improvement from the chip industry. Yes. How to optimize the you know, chip design for this kind of more analytics driven tasks. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we are all looking to these different areas now. We have just a couple of minutes left, and Jim, you get one last question after this, but I got to ask you, what's on your wish list? What do you wish you could learn, or maybe what did you come to Spark Summit hoping to take away? Um, you know, I, I've always treated myself as a you know, technical developer. You know, one thing I very, I'm very excited these days is the emerging of the new technology, like a Spark, like a TensorFlow, like Cafe, you know, even Big Deal, which is announced this morning. So, uh, this is something like the first uh, goal when I come to this, uh, you know, big uh, events, industry events. I want to learn the new technology, and the second thing is most to share our experience and also about uh, you know adopting of this new technology, and also learn from you know other colleagues from different industries how people change life, you know, disrupt uh, the older industry by taking advantage of the new technologies here. You know, the community's growing fast. I'm sure you're going to receive what you're looking for. Jim, final question? Yeah, I, I heard you mention DevOps and Spark in the same context, and that's a huge theme. We're seeing more DevOps is being wrapped around the life cycle of development and training and deployment of machine learning models. If you could uh, have your ideal DevOps tool for Spark developers, what would it look like? What would it do in a nutshell? Actually, uh, it's uh, still, I just share my personal experience. In near, uh, we actually developed a lot of the in-house DevOps tools. Like, yes. uh, for example, when you run a lot of different Spark jobs, stream, batch, you know, like a one minute batch versus one day batch job, how do you monitor the status of those workflows? You know, how do you know when the data stop coming? How do you know when the workflow like failed? Then even how, monitor is a big thing and then alarming when you have something failure or something wrong, how do you alarm it? And also the debug is another big challenge. So I certainly see the growing effort from both Databricks and the community on different aspects of that. Very good. All right, so I'm going to ask you for a, kind of a soundbite summary. I'm going to put mm -hmm. you on the spot here. You're in an elevator, and I want you to answer this one question. <laughs> Spark has enabled me to do blank better than ever before. Certainly, certainly. I, I think, uh, as I explained before, it uh, helped a lot, you know, from both the developer, you know, the, even like the startup try to disrupt some industry. 
it helps a lot. And uh, I really, I'm really excited to see you know, this deep learning integration, all different like roadmap they put you know, down the road. I think they're on the right track. All right. Dr. Excellent. Wong, thank you so much for spending some time with us. We appreciate it. And uh, go enjoy the rest of your much. day. Yeah, thanks for being here. And yes. thank you for watching theCUBE. We're here at Spark Summit 2017. We'll be back after the break with another guest. Oh.